Hello students, welcome. This is Jyoti Rajput and today we are going to study a new topic that is study of simple ecosystem. In this video, we will study about the pond ecosystem and the river ecosystem. So first we will start with the pond ecosystem. The pond ecosystem, it contains all the components of ecosystem. It has the living, that is the biotic factor, you can say the biotic component. And it has the non-living, that is abiotic factors, the abiotic components. When we talk about the abiotic components, there is presence of water, there is presence of rocks, temperature, pH, salinity of water, presence of organic and inorganic matter dissolved gases like the oxygen and when we talk about the biotic factors there are presence of the producers which receive the sunlight and the producers here examples are like the phytoplanktons blue green algae green algae then merged plants submerged plants floating plants and even the fledglets so producers, these are the ones which are producing food for all the organisms. There are presence of the herbivores. These are called as consumers. These herbivores, consumers, they are the ones which are dependent on the producers. And here the next comes the decomposers. Those are the one like for example the bacteria, like the fungi. Those are always present in the bottom of the pond which forms the humus so whenever the living organisms they die the bacteria the fungi they do the decomposition and this is how because of the degradation all the abiotic component like the minerals they are going to get free from the body and will again release into the soil so when we focus on the pond ecosystem here you can see the abiotic components, water, temperature, pH, salinity of water, inorganic matter, organic matter and dissolved gases. And here you can see the producers like here you can see producers are the some example like the phytoplanktons which always float on the surface of the water. Blue green algae, green algae. Here you can see the merged plants. This is the submerged plants and there are some of the floating plants also there are some fledglets also which produce food for all organism when we talk about the consumers consumers they are being classified into primary consumers secondary consumers and the tertiary consumers primary consumers these are the one which are dependent on the producers like the zooplanktons insects small fishes these are going to be called as primary consumers Secondary consumers are the ones which are dependent on the primary consumers like the snakes, large fishes, etc. which consumes the zooplanktons, insects and the small fishes. And if some animals which are dependent on the secondary consumers, they are going to be called as the tertiary consumers. Now the next comes the decomposers like the bacteria, fungi which is always present in the bottom of the water. Here so this is how the pond it has the biotic component and it has the abiotic components both the living component the biotic component consists of producers herbivores and the decomposers these are the examples of producers these are the examples of the primary consumers here comes the secondary consumers and the last is the decomposers now the next we are going to study about the new ecosystem that is called the river ecosystem river it is a large natural source of flowing water obtained from precipitation it occurs as a result of moving down of surface water along the slope due to the action of gravity every major river has a point of origin a river it is a powerful geological agent and there are number of animals which come to the river so that they can drink the water the rivers they are being divided into perennial river intermittent river and the ephemeral river perennial river they are the one which has continual flow of water throughout the year intermittent they are the river in which the water flow is seasonal and ephemeral this is the river in which the flow is always occasional 
Here, when we talk about the structure of the river, the river they are split into three parts longitudinally. First is the upper region where the river water falls, the source we can see. Then comes the tributaries. Tributaries, this is a place where a river or stream that feeds into another river rather than ending in a lake or ocean. If a river is large, it is likely to fed by number of tributaries. And even the marshes place are also seen, marshy place. Then next comes the estuary. Last is the estuary. Here in the river, there are number of abiotic factors they are present. Abiotic factors, here there are some of the physical factors and there are presence of the chemical factors also. Physical factor comes like the slope, substrate, substrate, flow, velocity of water, turbidity, depth of the river, light penetration and temperature. And the chemical factors comes the dissolved oxygen, pH, alkalinity, free carbon dioxide and oxygen. Here now we will talk about the biotic factors. In the river there are presence of the producers like the green algae, the presence of mosses. There are places when the river water it is reduced in current the rooted plants are also present. There are some of the free floating plants are also present which are always present in the place where the river water it is slow. Then next comes the consumers which are dependent on producers. So here these are the consumers which have some special structures like presence of hooks, suckers. So they can be able to attach to a kind of a substrate in this fast flowing water current. Here the primary consumers are like the zooplankton which are dependent on the phytoplankton which is the producer. The primary consumer like the benthic organism. Benthic organism they are also always towards the bed. Here the benthic organisms are like the caddisfly, larvae, snails, flatworms, stonefly, mayfly, nymph, various types of insects and small fishes. They are the one which are dependent on producers. That is why we call them these are primary consumers. Then next comes the secondary consumers. The examples are like the fishes, freshwater, crabs. They all are dependent on these primary consumer animals. The tertiary consumer, here comes the large fishes, river turtles. They are the ones which are dependent on the secondary consumers. And again, last comes the decomposers. They are the ones which are detrivorous in nature like the bacteria, fungi, which always live in the bottom of the river. And they also do the degradation and decomposition of the dead living organism and this is how all the minerals now they are going to get released into the environment and again it is going to be used by the plants as a fertilizer so this is how the pond ecosystem and river ecosystem was and here the video ends and thank you very much